Hello, my name is Matthias and welcome to the FPL Scope YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about who I think are the best players at each and every price point in Fans Premier League at the moment. So I'm going to go through every single price point from the goalkeepers until the last forward, which is going to be Holland because that's the only, only player available for 14.0 as a forward. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to start with the 4.0 goalkeeper and move along from there. Goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders and forwards. Pretty much a straightforward video. So let's go right ahead with the 4.0 goalkeeper. And that is Alfonso Areola, who I think has the most likelihood of starting among the 4.0 goalkeepers. Areola is... I, I have like a slight edge for Areola compared to Fabianski as the starting goalkeeper of West Ham. And for 4.0, if you get the starting goalkeeper of West Ham, I think that is pretty much the best value you can get from a goalkeeper in general this season. Um, potentially. Uh, we'll move on to a couple other goalkeepers eventually. Um, but yeah, the next one is uh, Mark Flecken, who is currently my 4.5 goalkeeper of choice. And this is probably going to be the case regardless of Raya staying or not because I think Flecken is going to start anyway but I'd feel much more at ease if David Raya has left or if uh, Thomas Frank goes out and says that Raya is not going to start it's Flecken from now on uh, but that little bit of a um, little bit of doubt is making me doubt Flecken a little bit but at the same time there are not that many 4.5 goalkeepers that I'm really excited about Johnston for Crystal Palace decent um, Pickford is like the main guy among the 4.5 goalkeepers, so so yeah, I don't really know about that. I feel like Flecken is the best. For Bruggen, for, for Brighton as well, could also be good, um, considering he's the new starting goalkeeper for them. Moving on to 5.0 goalkeeper, and we have uh, Dibu Martinez from Aston Villa. And uh, the 5.0 section, not 100% sold on this. Maybe, because this video is, is filmed a bit before it's published, so maybe Onana has joined the game now for Man United, and he is 5.0. If that's the case, I think he's probably the goalkeeper of choice for pretty much everyone. I feel like Onana at 5.0 would be a super template pick, so I hope, I kind of hope that he's 5.5 just to make it slightly more interesting, but at 5.5 at the same time, he could be a bit too expensive, because I think at 5.5, Alisson is the best goalkeeper, and uh, yeah, I don't know, you could say Onana has, has higher potential than Alisson, even if he has 5.5, so maybe I'll have Onana here if he has had 5.5, because Onana is going to play a lot along the ground, that's what Ten Hag wants to do, and Man United had the most clean sheets last season, so so yeah, maybe Onana is still the best value goalkeeper, even for 5.5, but I think I'm leaning towards either going with Flecken if he's the starting goalkeeper for Brentford, or going with Ariola if he's the starting goalkeeper for West Ham as my goalkeepers, because I don't really like to spend that much on my goalkeepers. Moving on to the defenders, we have the best 4.0 defender currently for me, and that is George Bolduck. Also, a little shout out to, because Bolduck is the right wing back for Sheffield United, but I think Riz Norrington Davis might be the left wing back for Sheffield United, and he's also 4.0. He was injured towards the end of the last season, and uh, I think he's a bit younger than Bolduck. Bolduck obviously has some FPL pedigree. He was pretty good in his debut season. Uh, three years ago, I think. Um, but yeah, I think Baldock is is a really good option as it stands. I think he's the starting right back or right wing back for Sheffield United. And like I said, he had I think 144 points in the was it 2021 season or was it 1920 season, something like that. And that made him priced. That got him a price rise from I think he started at 4.5 his first season, and then the second season after the 144 point season. He cost 5.5 million, which is which is crazy uh, compared to these prices right now, because there are a lot of good value defenders, and we're going to get to one of them right now, and that is the 4.5 defender that I like the best, and that is Destiny Udoge for Tottenham. This is more sort of like for the the whole season, I guess. I'm not 100% sure about Spurs at the start of the season defensively. I think Postecoglou might have a difficult start. They have some tough fixtures in the first two game weeks, I think, at least. Uh, but yeah, over the course of the season, I think Destiny Udoge will be the best 4.5 defender. Uh, I think he has super high potential. I think he could be more nailed and just as attacking as Perisic was last season. And I, and I know Perisic was like a super huge like Game Week 1 favorite among uh, FPL managers, uh, FPL experts alike. Um, so yeah, I think Udoge could just live up to what Perisic didn't really live up to and, and be like that consistent left back for... Spurs and they should be really offensive attacking minded so that might hurt him defensively in terms of clean sheet points but I think offensively offensively, I think he can get like three or four or five goals and the same amount of assists as well potentially even more because Spurs might be super attacking and super good 
I think he's really fantastic, but I think 5.0 Estepinian is the best value defender, personally, in the whole game. Uh, and yeah, at 5.0, I think he is kind of a no-brainer pick, but I don't know, there are other decent picks at that price, especially the Arsenal defenders, Gabriel and uh, Sinchenko. Some City defenders, one of the City defenders might end up being the best one as well, but it's just the matter of who, which City defender. Uh, is it Ake? Is it Akanji? Is it going to be Guardiola if he joins? Is all of a sudden Laporte going to start playing again for City? Who knows, really? Uh, so yeah, it's really tough to to pick a 5.0 City defender, and that's why I think Estepinian, who is like the most attacking fullback in the whole league, I think he is sort of a no-brainer pick at 5.0 uh, at that price point. 5.5, speaking of uh, Man City defenders, I think John Stones has the possibility of being the best 5.5 defender. But currently, I'm leaning towards uh, Luke Shaw. I think Luke Shaw is just proven. He got a lot of bonus points last season. As a left back, he was he was pretty attacking as well. And, and yeah, I think he's just a, a magnificent pick in general. 5.5, too cheap for him. I think defenders in general are too cheap. I don't really get why Shaw is so much cheaper than, for example, Virgil van Dijk, who I'm going to get to at 6.0 because there aren't that many alternatives at 6.0. But... But either way, I feel like uh, Shaw is, is still really good value. The only thing is, some people have speculated that if Onana comes in, they won't play as many short passes to Shaw. Like, Shaw won't have to distribute that much because Onana can distribute just as well. Meanwhile, De Gea didn't really distribute at all. Like, he passed it straight to Shaw, and Shaw was the one who started the attacks for Man United. So maybe, with Onana being such a passing goalkeeper, he might steal some of the bonus points from Shaw as well. But I still think Shaw is a fantastic pick. If not for sure, then then maybe Stones. But but yeah, those two are the standouts at 5.5 for me. I mentioned Virgil, Virgil van Dijk, and he is pretty much the only 6.0 defender. I think there's one more. Uh, yeah, of course, it's uh, Joao Cancelo, who's still their 6.0 defender, and he not touching him ever in NFL, even if he is back playing for City. He's always cursed for me. Oh, every time I have him, he, he sucks. And every time I don't have him, he is awesome. So I hope he just leaves the, the Premier League. When it comes to Virgil van Dijk, though, I think... There's much more value for 5.0 at with uh, Konate, his center back partner. I think he has just as much, if not more, goal threat, and I think he has like about the same bonus threat as well or bonus potential. And he's just a million cheaper, and he's gonna be about as nailed as Virgil Van Dijk as well. He's more injury prone, I guess, but but you can always sell people when they get injured. Uh, Virgil Van Dijk though, 6.0. Don't think he's ever gonna be worth it. Maybe for like a free hit or something if you have a lot of money left. He, he was really good in the free hit last uh, last season, I remember. He could score, he could get back to like uh, old heights and stuff. So 6.0 isn't the worst price for him, I guess, because he's been 6.5 in the past and been worth it. So so if Liverpool can sort their life together or sort their li- life out, then, then it's not the worst price. 6.5, I could have gone with Robertson, but I'm going with the other 6.5 defender, and it is Kieran Trippier. I feel like he's more more consistent. Robertson is playing more as like a slightly like a center back this season, so I'm not 100% sold on Robertson. Apart from that, not any other 6.5 defenders that I can think of. I don't think there are any other 6.5 defenders, so Trippier sort of wins this by default because he beats Robertson. Trippier was amazing last season at 5.0, but for 6.5... I feel like he got a lot of points at the start of the season last season as well. He w- was subbed off after 60 minutes and then they conceded and got bonus points still. He got so many bonus points. I think Newcastle will be... A, I mean, they were really good last season, but I think the bonus points will be spread around a bit more, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think Trippier as well. 2 million more than the Mothman. 1.5 million more than Fabian Schaar. Again, it just shows you that the value in defenders... And at this moment is 5.0 because I've mentioned like three or four 5.0 defenders at the moment. I still think his opinion is way better value than, than him or than them and Gabriel and Sinchenko for that matter. So I think there's just so much value in the 5.0 slot. I think 4.5 could have some nice uh, differential picks as well. Wan Bissaka, I haven't mentioned him. He is 4.5 and I think he is the starter for Man United. So that's 1 million less than Shaw. So especially if what I was talking about, if Shaw loses the whole uh, bonus point or... He's he's always going to be a good bonus point player, Shaw. But if he if the bonus returns diminishes a bit for Shaw, then the Wan Bissaka for one million less. When Wan Bissaka showed last season that he could also be offensively minded, and and yeah, he's he's really good as well. So him for four point five is another great option. You also have Ahmed Hudzic. You have Medikash who's four point five. Uh, Botman, I guess, uh, if you want to go with like a safe Newcastle defender. There's a lot of good 4.5 defenders. There's a lot of good 5.0 defenders. And to be honest, there's quite a few good 4.0 defenders as well. So that's why. 
I do have Trent Oxenarnold as the best value pick at 8.0, but that's because he's the only 8.0 defender. I still think he's good value, don't get me wrong, but I feel like there's much more value to get um, from defenders in the 4.0 to 5.0 range, or even 5.5 range with uh, with Shaw and Stones in particular. But uh, but yeah, 5.0 as well, Pedro Porro could be really good there, depending on him and Udogi, but that's another story I'm not going to get into in this video. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, the midfielders pretty soon. Um, meaning right now, uh, 4.5 midfielders, really tough to choose, uh, or not really tough to choose, but not that many to choose from. But I think there's one standout pick, and that is Chiquinho. Like I've mentioned him a couple times on this channel already. I feel like he has a decent chance of being like a starter or at least like a rotational player for Wolverhampton this season on the wing. Kind of like the role that Leon Bailey had last season, like in and out of the team. Sometimes he plays, sometimes he doesn't. Going to start like about 20, 25 games probably for, for Wolves, potentially. Depends on the transfer signings as, uh, and stuff as well. But Adama Traore has left. Um, Mateus Nunes is going to play more centrally because both Moutinho and uh, Ruben Neves are, uh, have gone as well. You know, Gonzalo Guedes is still loaned out to Benfica, I think. He's going back on loan there. And they really only have like Huang Hechan. Um, Pablo Sarabia as well didn't really play that much towards the end of last season uh, Pedro Neto obviously plays on the other wing I think uh, Chiquinho is going to be left wing and then Neto is going to be right wing for the most part but, but yeah, I think Chiquinho is, is a really good uh, good option I think he he had a couple of uh, FPL assists as well when he played back in um, the 2021-22 season he came in January for Wolves and then he got injured before last season so that's why he didn't play last season but he sort of got a couple games towards the end of the 2021-22 season. Uh, but obviously, you have to be a bit cautionary here because he was brought in by uh, Bruno Lage. He is not brought in by Lopetegui. So maybe Lopetegui doesn't rate this player. So we'll get to see in preseason if he is uh, any good or not. But but yeah, he's um, for now, he's the best 4.5 option. And uh, there might be some 4.5 options if some people are loaned out or sold at that price from the bigger teams. But currently, it's like Chiquinho. Um, and Dombley might get a chance at Spurs. That's kind of interesting, I think. I feel like like if an, if Dombley plays quite regularly and quite offensively in the Postecoglou system, because he usually has like one deep playing def- uh, midfielder and two more attacking midfielders. If Dombley is like one of the more attacking midfielders in a Spurs system, then him for 4.5 is is amazing as well. But him and Spurs haven't really worked out so far, so I don't really count on that happening. That was a lot of talk for 4.5 midfielders. Let's move on to 5.0 midfielders and Alejandro Garnacho, who I think is. Also, someone who could potentially play or start in like 20 to 25 matches this season easily from United. Obviously, it's a bit dependent because he's a left winger, mostly Garnacho. That's where he's going to play. And that's also the favorite position of Marcus Rashford. So if Man United get a striker, then maybe the, the role for Garnacho will be less. I still think Anthony will be first choice at right wing. It seems like Sancho is on his way out, but he was sort of like a contender to play on left wing as well. So... I think Granacho can play a lot of games. He's showed already that he's really explosive. He can score a lot of goals. Um, I think he's going to be an option at some points this season, especially depending on if they get a striker or not. If the striker gets injured or something, or if Rashford gets injured, then, then Granacho is, is prime suspect to start at left wing. So I think Granacho for 5.0, I think that's sort of a mistake from FL. I think he should have been like at least 5.5 or, or 6.0 at least because um, yeah there are some good options at 5.5 and 6.0 that i'm going to talk about that that garnacho could be like similar to i guess one of them is julio and ciso 5.5 he is 5.5 which is is really low but if he is a starter for brighton he should be closer to what mitoma is at 7.5 and mitoma is still fantastic value at 7.5 so if if Enciso plays as a regular starter for brighton He's fantastic. So uh, I think he is such a great player. I, I'm so much looking forward to watch or so much looking forward to see him play uh, this coming season. Uh, the only thing is they brought in Joao Pedro, who is most likely going to play in the number 10 role. I know McAllister was sold, so that opened up a spot for Enciso, but then Joao Pedro sort of fills that role. And Joao Pedro can play along the whole front line, but I know Evan Ferguson is going to want more playing time. You both you have Danny Welbeck and uh, Dennis Undov, who both impressed towards the end of last season. Then you have Mituma on the left, and you have March on the right. You have a, a couple of different options there. So Enciso, 100% nailed. Gross could play in the number 10 role sometimes as well. So I think Enciso, if he starts playing regularly, I think he's going straight into my team because that's way too cheap for him if he's a regular starter. But currently, the doubts about his playing time makes him a great, a great option still, but, but not the best option for me so far. But he's the best 5.5 
option uh, currently for me. There are like Andreas Pereira, there are a couple of like other decent players, but mostly the, the best midfielders are in like the 6.0 to well, 8 point or even like just you'll see uh, the next few players. Uh, the best 6.0 option for me, again, not that many great options. I think my favorite option was supposed to be Jacob Ramsey, but he's injured. So for game week one, I wouldn't recommend him. But for the whole season, I think Jacob Ramsey could be the best 6, 6.0 million midfielder. But I also have really high hopes for Gibbs White. Gibbs White and Brandon Johnson for 6.0 are really good for, for Nottingham Forest. I just prefer Gibbs White because he's on set pieces, he's on penalties, I think. Mostly, maybe Johnson takes some penalties as well, but 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 yeah. Anyway, Gibbs White is so important for Nottingham Forest, and if they want any chance to survive this season, then Gibbs White is going to have to play up to his best, like he did last season, or perhaps even even better than that. I I think Gibbs White is such an amazing player. So so yeah, start of the season not the best. They have tough fixtures to start the season, Nottingham Forest. But eventually, Gibbs White is going to be in my team at some point. I'm 100% sure of it because he is such a fantastic player. And he had a really nice link up with uh, Taibo Avani up front as well. So, so yeah, Gibbs White is a fantastic player. 6.5, we have... Uh, I, I even mentioned that Mitomo was 7.5. In my head, he was 7.5 and still great value. But he's actually 6.5, which is just amazing. Like That's fantastic value. There's so many cheap, like really good cheap players this, this season. You have the premium players like Trent Alexander-Arnold, Salah, and Holland for... A very steep price, but then the rest of the players are really cheap. Mitoma for six point five is is fantastic value. Uh, there's he's this is also like a really good um, price uh, price point six point five. Mboemo is also really close to being number one, but for Mboemo it's more the fact that I feel like he has not that high of a ceiling once Tony is back mid season. But for the start of the season, I think Mboemo and Mitoma Mitoma are neck and neck and I think Soli March as well is getting really overlooked like everyone has gone with Mitoma he's like the favorite player he's like oh he has that dribble dribbling PhD sort of thing uh, everyone likes a tricky Japanese player as well like it's always really fun to, to watch those guys play Mitoma is, is one of my favorite players in the Premier League as well but Soli March is, is still amazing so I think he is also a great option for 6.5 uh, if you want to go with a, a bit of a differential pick but Mitoma for 6.5 Fantastic value. It's a fantastic price point with several other good players there as well. 7.0, slightly less enthused about the 7.0 mark, but I think Sterling has a really good chance of severely outplaying his price point. Like, I'm not 100% sure about Sterling. We we don't really know with Chelsea. We don't really know with Sterling, but he's still like, what, 28 years old? He still has a lot of good career left if he wants to. That's, that's the only issue with him. Is he sort of like satisfied now is he earning a big paycheck at Chelsea and that's it he has won enough trophies he's won enough he has enough accolades really for for a lifetime really he's he's been such an amazing player but that's exactly why he's such a good pick for 7.0 as well like he could be like 10.0 value uh, but worth way less so he might be this year's Rashford if you remember Rashford last season was 6.5 to start the season when he's actually like a 9.0 plus probably 10.0 player if you price it correctly in in my view uh, but yeah, Sterling might be one of those guys who severely outplays his price point. But he's also a slight doubt because you never really know with Chelsea and, and Sterling. So so yeah, wait and see with him. But fantastic uh, player. 7.5, I've gone with James Madison. Uh, Phil Foden's also in strong consideration for this price point. But Foden is also slightly a risk in terms of minutes. Madison is more secured with, when it comes to minutes for... Um, for uh, He's gone to Spurs. <laughs> yeah, for Spurs... Uh, he, he is a fantastic option, 7.5. I think Spurs as well could be really good value because obviously last season, apart from Kane, none of their players had really good value. So they are most likely going to be underpriced this season. Madison is amongst them. He was fantastic for Leicester, which is a much worse side, but now he plays for, for Spurs. He's probably going to take his fair share of set pieces as well. And uh, and yeah, he's, he's an amazing Premier League player. He's an amazing fence Premier League player. So, so yeah, I think for 7.5, Really good value as well. Someone I'm really considering in my own team, even though I don't currently have him. 8.0, I've actually gone with uh, Martinelli. I still feel like Martinelli is the clear first choice with Arsenal. I learned my lesson last season to not doubt Martinelli as the starting left winger for Arsenal. He can play up front as well. He, Whenever you doubt him, he's going to return with a lot of great points, uh, a lot of goals, a lot of assists for Arsenal. He's such an amazing player, and, and I feel like he's pretty secure on the left wing spot for, for Arsenal still. Um, so yeah, for 8.0, I think he is 
he's, he's a great option as well, but I think for 8.5, you can get an even better player, and that is Bukayo Saka, his teammate. He's on penalties, sure, Martinelli actually outscored, or was close to outscoring Saka last season, especially for his price point. He, he was better value than Saka last season, but I feel like Saka didn't really get that many penalty chances last season. I think that might go up this season. I think Arsenal will be even better <laughs> this season. I'm one of those guys who believe that they will actually win the league. They signed Declan Rice, who is my favorite player at West Ham. So, so yeah, I think uh, I think Arsenal will be really good going forward as well. And Saka on penalties, he's safe. There are some doubts, I'd, I'll admit, with Martinelli's playing time, but because you have Charles Sartre, obviously, you have Emil Smith Rowe, you have several other players, but on right on the right wing, Saka is pretty much super nailed. I'm hoping he gets a bit more rest this season, so he can actually he doesn't have to play every Euro play game on top of playing. Uh, in the Premier League and he might get some rest in the Premier League as well at times because that will help him in the other Premier League matches that he does start to get even more points so I think Saka will get 200 plus points for sure I think he might reach 250 points and for 8.5 that's fantastic value and especially if he's when he's on penalties as well he's going to get a lot of extra goals 9.0 uh, 8.5 I actually had Fernandez as like sort of like a second option for, for Saka like he's also fantastic value but I think Rashford a 9.0 is even better value, even though he's 0.5 more expensive. He proved last season when he was way cheaper than the Fernandes. Now they're much closer in terms of price. But but last season, even if you just look at the points, Rashford was way better than Fernandes. I know Fernandes underperformed his points. He should have had more points. It should have been much closer in terms of points compared to Rashford. And Rashford obviously had that like purple patch. I think Rashford is just an amazing player. I, I, I rate him really highly. Like I think... It seems like most people have like Saka way above Rashford, but I have them pretty pretty neck and neck. I, I'm a huge fan of both players, as you can see, uh, from from the price points and, and uh, who are my favorite players at that price point. But yeah, Rashford at 9.0. It's not on, not on penalties, but he's also not far away from penalties. Obviously, Fernandez is, Bruno Fernandes is going to play most matches, but I feel like Rashford is one of those guys, if he wins a penalty and he feels confident, he might step up and take one. We've seen that before, that he takes a penalty when Bruno is on the pitch, so... Even without that, he's he's such a goal scorer. He's such a, a nice player. Proved last season that he is a fantastic player. So so yeah, nine point really a no brainer for Rashford. Ten point five is also a no brainer with De Bruyne. To be fair, it is a really good price point for him. He was twelve point zero last season, and a lot of people had him last season even at that price. So for ten point five, I still think he is pretty good value. I don't think he is, especially at the start of the season, considering he is he's most likely injured for game week one. He's not someone you should consider right away. But I think. Most of us guys uh, playing fans Premier League are going to own De Bruyne at some point this season because he is the most nailed midfielder for City when he is back fit. And for 10.5, he's pretty pretty good guarantee of goals as well. It's a bit steep of a price, but still, it's, it's still a great price. 9.0 as well. I could also mention um, Hang Min Son. He's also a great contender to be the best 9.0 midfielder. Huge price uh, or whatever you say, like a major price fall from last season when he was 12.5, 12.0, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, after winning the Golden Boot, he had a really disappointing season last last year, so on, but he had like hamstring issues and stuff as well, so so he's a definitely a contender for 9.0. 10.5 OC, it's it's the Bruyne, there's no contests, really, literally there's no contest contest because there are no other 10.5 midfielders, so, so yeah, the Bruyne sort of wins it by default, but I still think he's good value. Speaking of winning by default and still being fantastic value, you have Mohamed Salah, 12.5. No other 12.5 midfielders, obviously, no one even close. And that's there's a huge reason for that. And that's because Salah has been absolutely fantastic uh, f ever since he returned to the Premier League and started playing for Liverpool. He's just been one of the best value players, even at his high price, every single season, pretty much. He's been fantastic value. And this season is is similar in, in that regard like he he's such an amazing player so so yeah a lot of good midfielders that's why a lot of people are going with five midfielders they're going with a three five two formation usually or or four five one i've even seen so many good midfielders to choose from uh so there, that's not really a surprise but let's move to the forwards and see if there are some good value picks at the forward position as well 4.5 i don't really think there is that much value at this price point i think archer has the best chance potentially i mean if watkins gets injured i think archer is the starting striker for aston villa but watkins has been pretty consistent he is pretty much an iron man who can play all the time but apart from archer i can't really see any other 4.5 even or even archer i can't really see him playing much so i don't think there are that many good um 4.5 forwards so that's why i'm going with archer who has the most talent out of all of them i feel like 
he showed in the under 21 euros that he's he's really good he's shown before that he's really good he showed on loan with uh was it uh middlesbrough i think that he's really good he's ready to take the step up and especially if he gets loaned out maybe he gets loaned out to like a lesser team i guess aston villa are probably not in that position i still i think aston villa will have a fantastic season but I don't think they will loan out their one of their brightest talents to like a rival team in the Premier League. I think they'd rather loan him out back at, back out again to a Championship team. But anyways, Archer, don't really think I'll loan him apart from maybe at the start of the season just to be a four point five like legacy pick, I guess. Five point not that many good five point uh, forwards, but there are a couple, and I think Kalajic for Wolverhampton could be their starting striker. I think he has a decent chance of being their starting like number one only lone striker for Wolves. Obviously, he came before last season uh, to the Premier League, joined Wolverhampton, and then in the very first game he tore his ACL, I think, and was out for the rest of the season. So, so yeah, he's been back in training now, I think, and. Uh, He's a good good uh, candidate of being the starting striker for Wolverhampton. Obviously, you have Matthias Cunha, who's not in the game yet, who, who might be the starting striker there. Um, they have some really good good players. I mean, Jimenez is past his prime. He's probably not going to start. Diego Costa has left. Huang He Chan could play some minutes at forward or a striker for Wolves. So I think Kalaj is, is, is a pretty good uh, good option. If you want to have someone a bit more safe, you can go with Elijah Adebayo for Luton. Not the best finisher, but he's a fantastic player. Like, not the best fancy Premier League player, potentially. But he's proven in the past as well that he can, can get a lot of goals and assists. It's just last season he didn't get that many goals. And penalties was taken over by Carlton Morris, who's a 5.5 striker. But he's not the 5.5 striker, Carlton Morris, that I've chosen. Because I've actually chosen Eliman Ndiaye, who I think is a really good pick at 5.5. Uh, I think he's being pretty overlooked. I think he was one of the best players in the championship last season, if not the best for Sheffield United he is sort of he's not like an out and out striker but he usually plays uh, up front next to someone else I think they might be bringing in a new striker Sheffield United maybe someone on loan maybe they get Balogun on loan that would be be crazy he's he would be the best 4.5 attacker if that's the case but and yeah, yeah still even though he doesn't play he sort of plays like a second striker ish role He's still a really good player, and he still gets a lot of goals and assists. So, so yeah, I think he's he's the driving force for Sheffield United. And if Sheffield United want to do anything this this season, I think Ndiaye is going to be the, the man behind it, really. So for 5.5, I think he's he's great value. But there's an even better value pick, I think, for 6.0, and that is Jan Vissa. I think he is majorly overlooked. I mentioned Mboemo for the 6.5 midfielder slot, but for 0.5 less, you can also have, or rather have, Wissa, who who plays as the striker for for Brentford with Ivan Tony out. So throughout for the the whole season, maybe Wissa isn't the best because when Tony gets back, his playing time is is slightly more in doubt with uh, Kevin Shaw the, and uh, Keen Lewis Potter as well potentially playing in his position. But as long as Tony is out, Wissa is fantastic value, and especially at the start of the season with the fixtures that Brentford have. I think he's he's great. He's currently in my in my current draft. Uh, you can watch that video. Look, look at my latest draft uh, on on the YouTube channel as well if you want to check that out. But but yeah, Wissa. I think he's a fantastic player. He scored was it four goals and one assist in the five games that Tony didn't play last season, and now he's going to play without Tony the whole season. Him and Mboemo will, will reap the rewards, I think, from uh, from the start of the season. Six point five. Actually, going with a bit of a curveball here. I'm going with Julian Alvarez or Julian Alvarez I, I did like the pronunciation guide uh, not too too long ago and tried to pronounce every name and Alvarez for some reason Alvarez was one one of the guys I struggled a bit with but with all the A's but to get it perfectly correct but anyways uh, Juli- Julian Alvarez um, is a fantastic striker and especially if Holan goes down at any point he's going to be the best value player in the game in general and Holland didn't really get injured last season that much. He was injured for Norway a couple games when it was an international break. But apart from that, he was pretty healthy. But that hasn't been the case. The last season he had with Dortmund, he was injured quite a lot. So if that happens, Alvarez is going to be a great option. But even if Holland is fit the whole season, I think Alvarez is going to play a lot more this season than he did last season. They proved last season that when uh, De Bruyne, especially when De Bruyne is out, which he might be from the start of the season, they could play with both Alvarez and De Bruyne. So... Alvarez is a fantastic pick, I think. I think he is being overlooked because people are just thinking, oh, it's Holland, so Alvarez won't get to play. But they've shown that they can play together and score together. So 
and even he can, he can even come on with the last 30 minutes and score like a hat trick if he wants to like he, he's that type of player like he can score he had a game i think uh, with river plate i think before he joined man city where he scored a double hat trick basically six goals in the same match so so yeah at some point uh, this season alvarez is going to be like a major like captain differential sort of guy uh, i'm sure so so yeah alvarez for 6.5 i think he is he's a fantastic striker for that price uh, there are a couple other decent uh, strikers in this price range, but Alvarez for me has such a high ceiling that I, I'm going to pick him. 7.0, there are not that many players to choose from. There are actually two, two Chelsea strikers, and uh, one of them is Romelu Lukaku, so that leaves only Nicholas Jackson as the, the main guy I can pick. Lukaku is obviously either leaving or rotting on the bench probably for Chelsea. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he turns his life around at Chelsea, but he's never performed at Ch with Chelsea, really, Lukaku. So, so yeah, there's only really one option here. But to be honest, I think Nicholas Jackson is super overlooked. I think he is a fantastic striker. He only has one season. That's why a lot of people don't know about him yet. He had one really, or had one senior season with uh, Villarreal where he was, was fantastic, scored a lot of goals. He was like one of the most clinical strikers in the whole, uh, like basically in the top five leagues, I think he was like one of the most clinical strikers. And playing for Chelsea, who created a lot of chances last season, they just couldn't finish them. He might be exactly what they need. So I think he is being overlooked for 7.0. But there's a reason for that. And that is because for 0.5 more, you can get Christopher Nkunku, who is just like fantastic. Uh, he is not Premier League proven. That's always the, the risk. That's why people are sort of put off by Nkunku. Both the two first fixtures are not the best, and the fact that he's coming from the Bundesliga and people have Timo Werner and Kai Havertz in mind and know that, oh, Chelsea striker from the Bundesliga, that can't be good, but Nkunku is the real deal. He's better than both Havertz and Werner, and I think he's going to fit more into the style that uh, Pochettino is looking for. Kind of a shame that he's listed as a forward because he's probably going to play as number 10 most likely, uh, but still, he's going to get a lot of goals, a lot of assists. I think he's going to be on pens. I think he's going to be on a lot of set pieces, especially with Reese James injured at some point, probably. Um, so, yeah, I think Nkunku is a fantastic pick, and that's why I would pay the extra 0.5 to go for Nkunku rather than, than Jackson if I had a Chelsea forward in mind. So, that's probably also why Jackson is being overlooked a bit, but Nkunku should not be overlooked. I know a lot of people have considered him. I know. There's another striker coming up now that is even more in consideration for most people. Probably even for me as well. For Apo, no, you can get Gabriel Jesus, and he has Nottingham Forest in the first match. And that is fantastic. I think over the whole season, I think Nkunku is better value than, than Jesus. But for game week one, I feel more certain about Jesus for Apo, no, and that's why he is super in consideration for me. If I have to fit in Salah, I probably can't afford Jesus, though. So that's why that's what I have to like sort of think about when I'm picking my own team. But Jesus... I mean, obviously, everyone's going to fall in love with him again because, oh, look at the XG numbers. But I know as someone who owned Jesus more than most last season that he is so wasteful. Like, I love the guy. I think he's a great player. But in terms of being clinical in front of goal, most matches he is not at all. So you might fall in love with XG numbers and think that, oh, maybe Jesus is a better pick than Saka. But not really because Saka is the opposite. Saka can score from anywhere. He can score... <laughs> from the weirdest angles and just bang it straight into the top bins do a gabbiadini as i like to call it uh you know jesus can miss the easiest chances and that's what frustrated me so so much last season but at the same time he gets so many chances he got 19 points in gimmick two last season i think he can get double digits in gimmick one against something forest at home this season so another great value pick at 8.0 Moving on, we have Harry Kane, who I still think is amazing value. Like he pretty much had the best season he had he has had of all time, two hundred and sixty three points, I think, and then he's still twelve point five, which is still a fantastic number. But once again, the reason that he wasn't that much talked about last season is because of the last guy. Who I'll just reveal straight away. Hold on, uh, hold on, just overshadows Kane. He's like the better captaincy option. Hold on, it's the more explosive pick, even though Kane only ended up nine points behind Hold on in total last season. But we know Hold on is the most explosive one and for that price that kind of price you want someone you can captain that's sort of why Kane is not as high value as especially Holland, but also Salah in my opinion because because Salah has more of that double digit potential but maybe that's different with Postacoglu maybe Kane will be a bit more hit and miss because it feels like Postacoglu will have like some games where they are fantastic and score a lot of goals some games they might struggle a bit more uh, so I think Kane might be more returning to the mean in terms of getting higher high scores and then not that consistent returns, but he's still super consistent. He's still one of the best strikers 
pretty much of all time, really. Um, he has no trophies to show for it because he plays for Spurs. He's not with West Ham, who have a Conference League trophy. I have to rub that in every time because I'm a West Ham fan. Uh, but but Kane is still such a fantastic player. A great pick still, but I, th- I still prefer Salah for the same price uh, in midfield rather than, than Kane. But Kane is going to be in my squad at some point, I'm sure, this season as well. Uh, but yeah, you have a, a load of different Spurs talents that are more underpriced than Kane. So, so yeah, hold on. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I don't really have to talk about him. He is obviously on the only 14.0 forward but there <laughs> there's a reason why he's the only 14.0 forward and that's because he is is amazing he probably should be the, the only 15.0 forward in fpl history as well because we know the highest ceiling that he has so yeah i said hold on i wasn't going to elaborate but that's usually what i do i elaborate even though i i say that i'm not going to but either way that has been this video i've gone through every single price point and my favorite player in each position each price point as well <laughs> so yeah i hope that was informative i hope you had a lot of fun watching this video even though i was really just like bang 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 bang, bang really just going past uh, past every single player fast paced but sort of the point of the video just uh, talk about every player the video is still 35 minutes minutes long so so yeah <laughs> i hope you got some some nice uh, some nice information from this video and some nice considerations in terms of uh, which players are the best at each and every price point so that's it for me see ya goodbye